This video is a review of the Schrodinger equation and particle in a box chapter in the quantum chemistry and spectroscopy playlist. So we start by using the classical wave equation to define the Schrodinger equation, which is our quantum wave equation, which we solve for any system. Once we have our potential energy specified V of X, so at every value of X, we know what potential energy our particle experiences. Then we can solve for our wave function psi of X and get a total energy E for a particle of a given mass M. So our Schrodinger equation is minus H bar squared, Planck's constant over two pi squared, divided by two times the mass, times the second derivative of the wave function with respect to position, plus the potential energy times the wave function, equals the total energy times the wave function again. So we use operators here, where an operator is acting on a function to give some new function, or in general, do something to an object to create a new object. In quantum mechanics, every uh, possible physical property we could measure, position, momentum, energy, etc., has a has a quantum mechanical operator associated with it. For position, that's multiplying by x. For momentum, it's multiplying by minus ih bar and taking the first derivative with respect to x. So there's a special kind of operator in function relationship called eigenvalues. So whenever an operator acts on a function, giving us a constant times the same function, the function is an eigenfunction of that operator, and the constant is called the eigenvalue. This is important specifically because the Schrodinger equation is an eigenvalue equation, where the Hamiltonian total energy operator acts on our eigenfunction, the wave function, to give the eigenvalue the total energy. So the wave function is interpreted as a probability density function. The wave function times its complex conjugate times dx is the magnitude of the square wave function times dx. That's the probability that our particle is between the positions x and x plus dx, so provided dx is sufficiently small. We then apply the Schrodinger equation to our first model system, the particle in a box where the potential energy is infinite outside the box and zero inside of it. We get that our wave functions are a bunch of sine functions, just as they were for the vibrating string. And we get that the energies of our, our quantized states are h squared, n squared over 8 ml squared, where our n here is a quantum number starting at 1 and going up from there. And l is the length of the box, m is the mass of the particle. We then apply the particle in a box model to the polyene UV vis spectra, where the difference in energy between two states is equal to the Planck's constant times the frequency of a given photon. So we show there in that video that the wavelength of the photon absorbed is approximately proportional to the number of double bonds or the length of our system as correctly predicted by the particle in a box model. We can then use what are called expectation value integrals to calculate things like the average position and momentum of the particle in a box, depending on our quantum number. So we can calculate average position, momentum, position squared, and or momentum squared. We can calculate the uncertainty for a given particle by, for a given property for a particle by the following type of expression, where we compute that expectation value integral for the operator minus its average value squared, acting on the wave function, and then taking the square root of the final result. When we do this for position and momentum from these values, we get a value which is in agreement with the Heisenberg uncertainty principle that this product must be greater than or equal to h bar over two. Extending this to three dimensions, we have the energy is now a function of three quantum numbers, one for each dimension, each starting at one and going up as an integer. We have h squared over 8m, nx squared over lx squared, plus ny squared over ly squared, plus nz squared over lz squared, length in each dimension uh, and each individual quantum number. And the wave function then is a product of the wave functions from each individual dimension. And then our final concept to discuss is degeneracy, which is how many energy levels, how many states have the same energy. When you're the only state with a given energy, you're singly degenerate. When you have two, you're doubly degenerate, etc. Things where you have five equal energy levels will be called fivefold degenerate. And generally, this degeneracy arrives due to some type of symmetry in our equation. 
So links to each individual video in the on-screen annotations and in the description below.